Good day and welcome to Big Bad Tech. I'm your instructor, Jim Pytel, and today's topic of discussion is manual and manual reversing motor starters. Our objective is to take a brief look at manual and manual reversing motor starters. This lecture operates under the assumption you've watched both the contactors and overload relays lectures available at the Big Bad Tech channel. If you haven't watched these lectures yet or only dimly recall their contents, please take the time to do so now. As you'll recall, a contactor paired with an overload element form the two necessary components for a motor starter, being one, a means of starting or stopping the motor by making or breaking an electrical connection, the contactor, and two, a means of protecting the motor from sustained overload conditions, the overload. A contactor and overload can be integrated into a single package called a motor starter, or the pair working in combination can be considered a motor starter. This lecture will cover manual motor starters. Manual, as the name implies, means the motor is turned on when someone turns it on via direct means at the point of use. Applications for a manual motor starter include industrial saws, lathes, drill presses, and other tools that require an operator's direct involvement. Manual motor starters don't use a magnetically linked pilot coil to close or open primary contacts. Magnetic motor starters, in contrast, are those motor starters that receive a start signal via other means, typically through the magnetic interaction of a pilot level control signal in a coil. Magnetic motor starters are for applications requiring a remote control or additional functionality. This lecture deals with manual motor starters and manual reversing motor starters only. Later lectures will discuss various incantations of magnetic motor starters. Note the schematic symbol for a manual motor starter includes both the symbols for a circuit breaker and an overload. Sometimes you may see additional detection mechanisms internal to the manual motor starter if they include instantaneous overcurrent protection. For example, this manual motor starter includes contacts that are manually, magnetically, and thermally actuated. Additionally, you may see a manual motor starter represented schematically as a set of primary contacts in series with an overload with a dashed line across it. The dashed line indicates this is a manual motor starter and necessitates no pilot coil, nor does it use any auxiliary contacts. If an operator wanted to start or stop the motor, they would manually close or open the contacts. In the event of a short circuit, the magnetic detection mechanism signals the contacts to open. In the event of a sustained overload condition, the thermal overload signals the contacts to open. Notice only the contacts act to break or make connection. The overload is a detection mechanism only which signals the contacts to open. These would be considered manual full voltage motor starters, sometimes called direct online or across the line starters. Full voltage means exactly that. The motor is instantaneously and directly connected to full voltage upon closure of the primary contacts. Such an event is characterized by a large surge of current known as inrush. Inrush current can be about six times normal full load current and direct online motor starters must be obviously rated to carry this amount. Inrush current, although intense and undesirable from a distribution standpoint, is ordinarily brief. As a motor comes up to rated speed, increasing counter electromotive force, sometimes called CEMF, opposes the applied voltage and current quickly drops to a reasonable level. The electromagnetic interaction lecture, available at the Big Bad Tech channel, discusses the CEMF phenomenon. If, however, a motor is subjected to a high inertial load, an industrial three-phase AC system lost a phase, or the rotor somehow locked due to a misaligned shaft or bad bearings, the inrush condition could continue. It is for this reason overloads are included in a motor starter. The overload elements in series with the contactor and the motor it is intended to protect detect this sustained current and signal the primary contacts to open. Manual motor starters often feature a trip indicator on the dial. A technician seeing the dial in this position would know that a motor starter had been subjected to a thermal overload or short circuit event and not manually turned off. Motors subjected to repeated thermal overloads may be damaged. For this reason, motor starters should be trip free, where the term trip free means that the starter cannot be held in the reset position while the overloads are hot. Manual motor starters often feature a lockout and tagout mechanism on the front dial. An operator wishing to service the motor 
can open the contacts, pull out a locking slider, and insert their individual lock and tag. Additionally, motor starters often feature an adjustable current setting for the overloads. This allows a motor starter to be employed for a range of applications. Similar to the ratings discussed in the contactors lecture, manual motor starters are sized by the desired voltage, current, and power to be switched, as well as application and utilization category. High voltage, high current, and more demanding applications and utilization categories will obviously require starters with higher power ratings. Let's now discuss manual reversing motor starters. Recall from the rotating magnetic field lecture, available at the Big Bad Tech channel, that direction of the rotating magnetic field produced by a stator is dependent upon applied phase sequence. A manual motor starter only will only allow an industrial three-phase AC motor to rotate in one direction only. For this reason, manual motor starters paired with a drum or rotary cam switch are found in applications necessitating bidirectional rotation. When the drum switch is in the forward position and the motor starter is closed, the target table illustrates that the phase sequence seen by the stator is L1, L2, L3. Let's say this rotates the motor clockwise for this particular application. However, when the drum switch is in the reverse position and the motor starter is closed, the target table illustrates the phase sequence seen by the stator is L2, L1, L3. This would see the motor rotate counterclockwise. Importantly, this pairing of a manual motor starter and drum switch necessitates that the motor starter be the one and only device that makes or breaks contact, not the drum switch. Drum switches are ordinarily not rated to make inrush current, nor is it designed to break full load current. The drum switch's only purpose is to determine the phase sequence applied to the motor. Operators must be counseled on the wise use of this combination of devices Otherwise, equipment could be damaged and unsafe conditions could develop. All right, this about wraps up our brief introduction to manual motor starters and manual reversing motor starters. We'll be making use of these devices in later lectures as the means of making and breaking electrical connection to and protecting motors from sustained overload conditions. Additionally, manual motor starters are commonly featured in applications necessitating functional isolation. Despite a motor being started or stopped remotely, via magnetic motor starter, a manual motor starter upstream serves as a means of disconnecting and disabling the motor for service, as well as an additional level of circuit protection. A technician could open the manual motor starter MS, lock it out and tag it out, and service the motor. Signals to the magnetic M contactor would serve no purpose because the motor has been effectively isolated from primary voltage. We'll discuss this application and more in later lectures. In conclusion, this lecture took a brief look at manual motor starters. We discussed manual and manual reversing motor starters using a drum or rotary cam switch. Additionally, we saw that a manual motor starter can be used to functionally isolate a motor remotely operated via a magnetic motor starter. Remember to review these concepts and practice these techniques as often as you need to really drive it home. Imagine how well lab will go if you know what you're doing. Thank you very much for your attention and interest, and we'll see you again during the next lecture of our series. Remember to tell your lazy lab partner about this resource. Make sure to check out the Big Bad Tech channel for additional resources and updates.